people are in unbelievable rush to buy a stock. I'll give an example of a well-known company. Walmart went public in October of 1970. 1970 went public. Already had a great record. It had 15 years performance, great balance sheet. You could have waited 10 years saying you're a very conservative investor. You're not sure this Walmart can make it. You want to check. You're, you're, you see them operate in small towns. You're afraid they can only make it in seven or eight states. You want to wait till they go to more states. You keep waiting. You could have bought Walmart 10 years after they went public and made 35 times your money. If you bought it when they went public, you would have made 500 times your money. But you can wait 10 years after Walmart went public and made uh, 30, over 30 times your money. You could wait three years after Microsoft went public and made 10 times your money. Now, if you knew something about software, I know nothing about software. If you knew something about software, you would have said, these guys have it. I don't care who's going to win Compaq, IBM. I don't know who's going to win Japanese computers. I know Microsoft, MS-DOS is the right thing. You could have bought Microsoft. Again, I'm repeating myself, stocks are not a lottery ticket. There's a company behind every stock. And you, you can just watch it. You have plenty of time. People are in an amazing rush to purchase a security. They're out of breath when they call up. You don't need to do this. It's, uh, the, uh, you need an edge to make money, too. People have incredible edges, and they throw them away. I'll give you a quick example of uh, Smith Klein. This is a stock in, that had Tagamet. Now, you didn't have to buy Smith Klein when Tagamet was doing clinical trials. You didn't have to buy Smith Klein when Tagamet was talked about in the New England Journal of Medicine or the British version, Lancet. You could have bought Smith Klein when Tagamet first came out, a year after it came out. Let's say your spouse, your mother, your father, you were a nurse, you were a druggist, you're writing all these prescriptions. Tagamet was doing an amazing job of curing ulcers, and it was a wonderful pill for the company because if you just stopped taking it, the ulcer came back. See, it, wasn't, it would have been a crummy product, but you took it for a buck and it went away. But it was a great product for the company. But you could have bought it two years after the product was on the market and made five or six times your money. I mean, all the druggists, all the nurses, all the people, millions of people saw this product. And they're out buying oil companies, you know, or drilling rigs, you know. <laughs> it happens. And then three years later or four years later, Glaxo, even a bigger company, it's a huge company, a British company, brought out Zantac, which was a better, at that time, an improved product. And you could have seen that take market share do well. You could have bought Glaxo and triple your money. So you only need a few stocks in your lifetime. They're in your industry. I think of people, if you'd worked in the auto industry, let's say you're an auto dealer the last 10 years, you would have seen Chrysler come up in the minivan. You've seen, if you're a Buick dealer, a Toyota dealer, a Honda dealer, you would have seen the Chrysler dealership packed with people. You could have made 10 times your money on Chrysler a year after the, the minivan came out. Ford introduces the Taurus Sable, the most successful line of cars in the last 20 years. Ford went up seven-fold on the Taurus Sable. So if you're a car dealer, you only need to buy a few stocks every decade. When your lifetime's over, you don't need a lot of five-baggers to make a lot of money starting with $10,000 or $5,000. So in your own industry, you're going to see a lot of stocks. And that's what bothers me. There are good stocks out there looking for you, and people just aren't listening, and they're just not watching it. And uh, they have incredible edges. People have big edges over me. <clears throat> they work in the aluminum industry. I see aluminum industry is coming down, in inventory is coming down six straight months. They see demand improving. In America today, you know, you know, it's hard to get an EPA permit for a bowling alley, never mind an aluminum smelter. So you know when aluminum gets tight, you just can't build seven aluminum smelters. So when, when you see this coming, you can say, wait a second, I can make some money. When an industry goes from terrible to mediocre, the stock goes north. When it goes from mediocre to good, the stock goes north. When it goes from good to terrific, the stock goes north. There's lots of ways to make money in your own industry. You can be a supplier in the industry. You can be a customer. This thing, this thing happens in the paper industry. It happens in the steel industry. It doesn't happen every week. But if you're in you're some field, you'll see a turn. You'll see something in the publishing industry. These things come along, and it, it's just mind-boggling. People throw it away. Uh, 